Welcome. In this module, let's talk about whose responsibility is information security governance? Who's going to actually do it? And who's going to be held accountable? Now, information security governance has responsibilities at different layers of the organization. In Pakistan, the governance functions are slightly different than practice in more mature markets. And that would be applicable for any um, a geographical area or any country or any market or any industry where the posture is lower than, um, than uh, satisfactory. So this is the typical organizational tiers and uh, who, who are the members at each tier. So there is a board or a steering committee. It consists of the board, uh, you know, at least one board member, CIO, CISO, IT management, and possibly some key business members, but not all the time. Um, in some cases, like in banks, sometimes they have some key business members as well. In IT management, you have, let's say, the CIO and all the report, direct reportees or all the general managers belonging to IT management and the chief information security officer or the chief of, uh, or the head of IT security. Um, then you have uh, the next tier, which is the chief information security officer or the security head. And um, at this tier, the CISO works with the information security management committee, which the CISO has formed in order to run the daily activities or the weekly activities of the information security transformation project. And below that is the tier where you have actual project teams for security and information technology working. Now, at each of the tiers that we've shown, let's talk about what are the responsibilities at that layer. For the board steering committee, where there's actually one board member, CIO, CISO, are present, there is organizational commitment, which is coming out of that board executive management representation. Uh, the budget is approved. It's presented and approved here. And there are also directions given on the extent of the program, perhaps the scope of the program. Decisions are taken. And then in the next tier, one tier below the board or the steering committee tier, you have IT management, which takes the directions from the steering committee or the executive management or the executive leadership. It will review the activity done uh, below for the security program. It will monitor it and it will propose backup, make proposals and recommendations up to the steering committee or to the board or to the executive leadership. And then at the CISO and security head layer, you plan, build and run the actual program. Um, the CISO actually does that. It designs a pro the security program and builds it and runs it and plans it. And the IT and security teams actually implement and execute the controls and the functions. Now, based on experience with real information security transformation projects in Pakistan industry, we have set a more um, practical structure as shown in the following slides. And this structure, which we're going to show you, is more well suited to drive the security transformation projects. Uh, successfully, particularly for Pakistan, because this is the sort of structure we see here in uh, actuality. So the structure for security transformation projects in Pakistan or any market which is like subpar or a slightly unsatisfactory security posture, you have the board represented on the top where you should give a quarterly report, quarterly presentation. Then you have, we're, we're calling this the Information Security Steering Committee, and it's a monthly report or a presentation, and then Information Security Management Committee is where the CISO and, the, uh, and his team uh, work, Information Security Management Committee, ISMC, they work on a weekly basis. And then on a daily basis, the IT and InfoSec teams are working. So at the first layer at the bottom, you have teams. At the second layer, the CISO drives the ISMC. And then at the third layer, uh, you have IT management and CISO, which form the Information Security Steering Committee, which meets on a monthly basis. And then you have the executive management which is consisting of at least one board member or executive management. Now, the uh, functions which are being performed are at the bottom layer, the IT and InfoSec teams are performing execution. The um, ISMC or the CISO is leading the strategy and the planning. At the uh, Information Security Steering Committee layer, you have assurance and review and making sure it's all done properly and filling in gaps. And uh, the board, executive leadership is demonstrating management commitment. And finally, the IT InfoSec teams are doing implementation. The functions done by the ISMC, led by the CISO, you plan, build, and run the security program. 
the functions done by the Information Security Steering Committee consisting of CIO, CISO, meeting on a monthly level, review, monitor, and propose. And at the board level, where you have at least one executive leadership member, a board member, there is commitment, you approve the budgets, and you direct. So when working in the practical industry, in a market like Pakistan, where the security posture is subpar, sub-satisfactory level, we should be open to adopt structures and strategies relevant for such market, tuned and tailored to that market requirement. And I would like to mention here that ISACA and other frameworks which are used globally, sometimes they propose mechanisms that do not always make sense and match uh, for an unprepared or slightly immature market like ours. So you, uh, we, we should not be hesita hesitating to um, orchestrate or build up or, or tune our project so that we are addressing the uh, fundamental realities of our market and we, we may require a tailored approach, which is different from what the worldwide global frameworks ask us to do. That's all that we have in this module. Thank you.